moments of greatness. Moments of tragedy. And of humor. Events which revive the flavor of an era. Milestones in our changing way of life. For this, the past used to be a dream, a memory, words in a book, the stories grandmother told. Today we're luckier. For nearly a century now, the past has been living, moving people, working and playing as they really did work and play. An artist sees the world around him through the eyes of his own time, through the rosy spectacles of affection or the dark spectacles of bitterness. But the newsreel camera has the eye of eternity. Since the sunset years of Queen Victoria, it has recorded for us life as it actually happened. From the vaults of the newsreel makers, we can relive the news and the nonsense, the tragedy and the laughter. We can watch it again and wonder. But this is not how we imagine it, but how it was. These were the days when transport was still leisurely and dignified. You were overtaken not by the aggressive, but by the energetic. Humor was simple, mostly of the banana skin variety. <laughs> Pleasures were simple too. Entertainment was not merely spoon-fed. You didn't just watch, you took part. You gathered round the piano or went to the fairground. That meant, of course, that you didn't just dress to slouch in an armchair, you dressed to be looked at. We have only recently begun to rediscover the joy of messing about in boats. Our grandparents knew all about it. They knew the pleasure of going out, of seeing and being seen, of making an occasion of eating out of doors, instead of just grabbing a sandwich by the roadside, of moving by your own muscles. At the society show places like Royal Ascot, elegant, was elegant. Even the internal combustion engine, still a mere substitute for the horse. Buses were still basically big wagons with engines stuck in front. And you could still ride a bicycle without risking your life. But already man was beginning his long, fascinated obsession with the motor car. And like most youthful obsessions, it was clumsy, boisterous, and fun. Not until the days of stock car racing, still a generation away, was there to be so much clowning with cars. They were new, novel, and noisy. The natural raw material of slapstick. So the obsession grew and not without a few slightly odd developments. Like the both-way cars. You drive. No, I'll drive. Oh, we'll both drive. the apparently driverless car. If this idea had been really pursued, we might today be able to tell ours to go and find their own parking meters, and perhaps eat their own parking tickets.
Cars were becoming a serious business though, and motor racing was, from the start, a serious sport. A world famous name, of course, was Brooklands. A tiny track by today's standards, with banking unthinkable at today's speed. But the speed, safety and reliability of the modern family saloon owes a great deal to the lessons learned in the golden days of Brooklands. Not all the lessons were learned without cost. It was the internal combustion engine that took men into the skies. But here too he had to learn the hard way. Great airships like the Hindenburg were things of beauty but they could be death traps. In striving for winged flight, Man sought out many inventions, some of them incredibly bizarre and naive. It took him some time to realize that pound for pound, he had not got the muscle power of a bird. Really, I think his trouble was he couldn't skate. Legs are stronger than arms, of course, but still not enough. This forerunner of the vertical takeoff plane really needed jets. The whole problem was one of marrying the internal combustion engine to a strong and efficient airframe. And there were many, many headaches on the way. the Wright brothers first achieved controlled, powered flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, on December the 17th, 1903. Six years later, Louis Blériot flew the English Channel in his own monoplane. The conquest of the air was well on the way. And air shows became a popular day out. to earth, or almost. Showbiz will always cash in on what's new, or escape from it. day out. That timeless feature of working class life was given new scope and range by the motor coach. No longer just the next field or the next valley. A day trip was enough for Mother Brown to get her knees up a hundred miles from home. Progress, or at least change, was gathering momentum so fast that one of the golden eras of the machine age was already approaching its end, the era of steam. 
The steam locomotive, that most splendidly virile of all man's mechanical symbols, was determined to go out in a blaze of glory. All very magnificent. And what a pity it's gone. What is it? Steam meant smoke. And smoke meant this. The notorious British pea super, later known as smog. We may sigh for steam trains and open fires, but this was their price. 